colors, the cotton candy skies. It's beautiful. You can't beat winter sunsets in Southern California and a beautiful day. Oh, oh. oh. Hey crew, I've got the key to that Bentley Continental GTC Azure. And today we're gonna to see what it's like to live with this high-end luxury convertible. We'll start by checking out the spacing in my driveway. It's parked a few inches from the edge, sitting next to my Cadillac CT5e Blackwing that's parked. Well, let's just say I could have parked it better. It's pretty far in towards the driveway. And yet, there's still plenty of room to walk in between the cars. And even in the case of my family, wheel a stroller through. To get inside with the key fob in my pocket, I just put my hand on the handle that unlocks the door. And then what I love about opening these doors is that they don't just have defined notches, they kind of stop wherever you want them to. So I can pause it right before touching the black wing and that gives me a nice wide access point. I need only to duck my head a little bit to scoot on inside and soft closing the door. It will then present my seat belt to me, very kind of you Bentley. And hello cabin crew. Thank you for joining me for this day in life video with the Bentley Continental GTC Azure. Now in this video, I wanna answer one question and that's whether in a place like Southern California, not in the frozen tundra, Alaska, whatever, you could actually enjoy a high-end convertible year round. Before I start the vehicle and get going, I wanna offload some items I brought with me that you'd have with you in a given day, like a smartphone, which can squeeze into the wireless charging slot here. I do already have some GoPros and batteries in there. That wouldn't be relevant for everyone, but for me, it's perfect. I got a water bottle here, easily fits in the door pocket. In fact, if I want a more secure fit, there's a further back pocket that works. Wallets, that can go in the console. Key fob, that can actually go right here on this side pocket. I brought a protein bar, also good. That goes in the console. And sunglasses, these can also fit in there and close securely. Now we can get the party started. V8 punches the air and then this wood veneer changes for a touchscreen display. That's a cool welcome. I don't know why I have my seatbelt on because I actually need to hear that noise from outside the car. Couldn't hear it at all inside and even outside. The throaty rumble is pretty well contained. Not gonna disturb anyone, not gonna upset the quiet of the morning. I think I'm gonna start with the top up, just because it's 59 degrees and I'm not ready to welcome the chill of the morning air. I am going to heat my seat and I'm gonna turn on this neck scarf, which just blows warm air on your neck. It's very necessary when the top is down, but even with the top up, why not? I'm also gonna heat my steering wheel because again, why not? Cozied up here, I'm gonna select the comfort drive mode as we begin pulling back into drive and uh, disengaging the parking brake here. Let's emerge from my driveway. The clearance of the gutter, no issue, nor did I actually feel that bump at all. Smooth. <laughs> While I'm still working my way out of my neighborhood, I figure why not try the turning radius? So paused here. Let's pull up the surround camera system and look at the front view. Then crank that wheel. Oh yes. Such a tight turning circle for such a big vehicle. Now we heard it for a sec, but what's that turn signal really sound like? Like elegance. Elegance and turn signal sound form. And if I did need to alert someone to an error on their part, I would do so with class. Okay, these seat heaters are not messing around. Too warm, gotta turn those off. And the air scarf, that's going off too. But what's coming on is the massage in stretch configuration, just to loosen things up fully this morning. And I am relaxed in these seats. The contour is perfect. The padding is supple. And blended with this ride quality that isn't as floaty as a Rolls Royce. It doesn't just sort of 
delight over the pavement, but it does suppress the road imperfections. I'll give a demonstration right here. Chewed up road surface, and yes, I heard it, but I didn't really feel it to the degree that would upset me. It just kind of pushes down the bad stuff, so you stay very mellow. As I start my commute, I'm in full enjoyment mode. It's easy to place this car within the lane markings as well. The steering has some more heft than, again, a Rolls Royce as a comparison, but that heft gives you a little bit of feel. The throttle and comfort, super relaxed. Still have a bounding torque from this twin turbo V8 but it's delivered in a way that especially as you're starting your day is not going to overwhelm. Oh man, you just can't help but audibly sigh. It's worth discussing visibility with the top up because you might think in a convertible it would be compromised too much. I don't have that issue in this car. The A pillars aren't right where I want to see something and the windows just behind them really help clarify what's going on there. Then behind this head restraint, which isn't really obscuring that back corner window, I can see out there and the back glass isn't so small and the deck lid isn't so high that I can't see the cars behind me. There is a blind spot where the convertible top comes down over there at what would be the B pillar. but. That's what blind spot monitoring is for. I can see out over the nose easily, which is downturns. The headroom isn't so great for myself at six feet tall. My head's maybe just a couple inches from the top, and that makes me feel a little claustrophobic, but having all this ambient light come inside from large windows really does help keep me at ease. Now, as a Bentley owner, I would, of course, have the finest curated coffee beverages. But as the guy pretending to be the Bentley owner, I lack the refined palate, so I'm gonna settle for Starbucks. And I am going to find out whether it's easier to go through a drive-thru with the top down. Mm -hmm. Almost there. And there we are. Actually, window's back down. Hello, may I please have a grande decaf latte? Okay, was it hot or ice? Hot, please. You got it. Anything else? That's it. All right, we'll see you at the window. Thank you. Great, thank you. Well, already my access to the window is easier. Let's see about this. Payments. I do. Do you get many people come through with cameras on their heads? No. At all. But I saw you last time in the these aren't my cars I'm just like making content with them yeah. and so uh, I just do things like how easy is it to, to uh, order in a drive-thru with a Rolls-Royce How was it? it's nice so getting my coffee was made so much easier without the restriction of a top I could just reach my arm out wherever I wanted to and I had a very friendly gentleman hand me a coffee and hopefully check out the channel now here's a practical question you're driving a sports car or a Grand Tour is clearance gonna be an issue with driveways like this? So this is pretty steep and I'm not taking it at much of an angle. Parking sensors are upset, but no scraping is happening. That is satisfying. I am gonna to have to bring the windows back up because I'm joining the highway and I want maximum insulation from those windy elements. I'll then put it in sports. You see how quickly the Conti GT V8 can get up to the pace of traffic. Okay, there we are, already caught up. And what's the passing power like? In the mid-range, here we go. Ah, uh, delightful. And immediate. Oh, and the V8 sounds pretty good too. Okay, backing out of sport, let's go into the Bentley drive mode. And what's it like just coasting at highway speeds with the top down? 
Well, I know that I'm instantly happier. There's that. Obviously a lot louder, but still with the dual pane glass, it's not too bad. And the moving air is pretty quelled for a convertible. Having these back windows up really brings it down in terms of the turbulence inside the cabin. And right now, since we're slowing down, I'm gonna activate the adaptive cruise control system. And there's also a lane keep assist. See how that works here. This is not the most sophisticated system, so it's not a hands-off system. But I'm going to take my hands off just momentarily to see if it's going to keep us in the center of the lane. And it looks like it just wants to correct. Like it's a lane keep system, not a lane centering assist. And then it wants my hands back on the wheel. So I find myself wanting a more sophisticated drive aid technology. but it's still helpful for if you're distracted for just a second and you look away and then it, you automatically kind of swing out from your lane, it will bring you back in. That's what it's good for. I'll be honest though, highway driving with the top down in traffic, not all that enjoyable. I'd want to pull off and bring the top back up. So let's do that. Well, actually to be fair, I don't have to fully stop to bring the top back up because I can do this at speeds up to 30 miles per hour. Actually, we were over 30 when we started and it was still saying, yeah, that's fine. Conversion in process. Almost done. Not the quickest change, but being able to do it in motion is really nice. And now we can get back right on the highway. All right, so trying this again now with the top up. Oh, wow, kind of shouting it feels like. Because for a fabric top, it's really quiet in here. I mean, maybe compared to the Bentley Coupe, it's loud, but every other convertible I've driven is so much louder. This is a loud road surface, but it's not creating all that much ambient noise inside. The cars passing by, yeah, you hear them. That guy with his modified exhaust. Hear it a little bit, but it's not disturbing me. The wind noise is probably the most impressive part because it's super mellow. All right, I made it into the office, but during my commute, my massage is turned off. It's unacceptable. I paid over $300,000 for this vehicle. Massage needs to be on when I say it's on. Ugh. There's Bob's S63 AMG. I'm gonna park right next to him, show him what a real luxury two-door looks like. Here we go. Into reverse. And I like all these different camera angles. Let's go for the uh, panorama rear. Let's make sure no one sneaks around a corner. And I wasn't expecting them. Overhead view, always helpful. What are you going to think of this, Bob? A Bentley! Not an AMG. There we are. And it's off to work I go. Do, 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 do. Now, there's no one actually parked next to me, but if there was, this is probably as far as I could actually open the door. And with the seat where it is and the sill being so wide, it's a little awkward to get out. I like that I don't have to slam the door though. Now as I head off to work, would I lustfully stare back at my car? I'm not so much sure about that. The chrome of the grill is a bit too glitzy for me. The red color, this dragon red, I think that's what they call it, sort of a blood color. And the fabric roof just takes away some of the gravitas of the Continental compared to the coupe. I guess I'd give it one glance. <laughs> How did I just see that? Bill left his toupee in the bathroom. Fred saw it, thought it was a rodent, called animal control. <laughs> animal control cubs. <laughs> they fought it. <laughs> they fought his toupee 
for 30 minutes. I can't believe I still have an appetite after seeing that, but I do, and I still want lunch. I just won't be eating anything with fur. As I figure out what that will be, I'm taking the scenic route. It's warmed up, I've got the top down, the jacket's off. And with scenery like this, hopefully you can understand why you choose the convertible year round. Oh my gosh. Stunning. The sun, the breeze, the composure, the comfort. I can't take the smile off my face, it just won't go. I don't care what kind of day you have at work, what funny or frustrating things you experience. You put the top down in this car and your day is just great. It's just wonderful. <sighs> and with my mind now clear, I've thought of lunch. It's gonna be fish from Bear Flag Fish Company. All right, I got my fish tacos. I've got best view in the world and probably the best seat in the house right here. This is what I call a lunch break. Ah, <sighs> that was delicious. And now before we turn to the office, let me talk you through this interior. We'll start with the rear seats. I'm going to attempt to get behind my driver's seat. At s nope, not even possible. Can't fit behind my own seat at six feet. So I guess it doesn't matter what the headroom's like with the top up because no adult is gonna be sitting back here. Your coworkers, Theodore, Charles, and Hudson won't be accompanying you to lunch. That's gonna be a solo trip or just with one of the guys. So let me just get out. Okay, that's right, I'll just I'll do that to get out of here. And uh, I guess if you brought a kid who could maybe sort of squeeze back here, then they could crawl through. Now this interior, this is where the money feels better spent. I mean, look at this pattern here on the doors, the stitching and quilting, the wood veneers, and this cricket ball colored leather, which it's funny because it's a similar color to the exterior, but I don't like it on the exterior, but I do like it on the interior. I'd be fine with this and a, a contrasting exterior color. The seats have that same stitching pattern. They're perforated, heated, ventilated. The feel of all the switches is super solid. Got this Bang & Olufsen sound system, aluminum speaker grates. That's like a $7,000 option. Nestling into that cabin. I'm so used to that Rolls Royce Spectre I was in. Put your foot on the brake and the doors would self-close. Alas, this isn't $500,000. This is merely $320,000 as tested. Steering wheel looks and feels great in the hands. The gauge cluster, you can put what information you want on there. And the infotainment, I already showed you its trick of spinning over, but I didn't show you this one. The analog gauges that are the third rotation over with the outside temperature of the compass and a, a lap timer that you won't use in your convertible. The glitz of the chrome is, oh, it's a little much for me personally. The gloss black, I don't usually like gloss black trim in cars and this isn't, my favorite either, but it doesn't smudge or scratch nearly as much as other ones because it's real wood. It's not that cheap plastic. I love the little dampening of the cover for the cup holders. Even that looks refined. The feel of the leather is amazing. I showed you the storage options. They're okay. It's not abounding in storage space, but you do have those nice large door pockets. It's really a nice place to spend some time, but uh, I can't spend too much more time here. I've got to get back to work. I wonder if Bill's toupee was ever released to the wild. Survived another day at work. Oh, but Bob didn't say a thing about the Bentley. Bummer. Before I go home, I do need to run to the grocery store and fuel up this car because my wife and I are going out for a night in the town. But before all that, is this convertible practical? We'll find out by grabbing some groceries from Trader Joe's. All right, I got two bags of groceries and some flowers for my lovely bride. And as I approach the Bentley, it would really be nice if we had the hands-free trunk access where you could just swing your foot under. Oh my gosh, it does! Check that out. And this is our trunk capacity. It's the same with the top up or with it down. Pretty shallow, but fairly deep. I think you can get a compact suitcase in there or what looks to be space for a couple bags of groceries standing up. That's one. That is two. And then the flowers delicately laying 
just behind them. Close it up. And we're good to go. Off to fuel. The EPA rates the Bentley Continental GTC at 16 MPG in the city, 26 on the highway, and 19 combined. If we got that 19 combined, then with this just under 24 gallon fuel tank, you have 450 miles on a single tank. I've been seeing 14.7 miles per gallon though. And with current fuel prices of $4.93 for premium fuel that this vehicle requires, we'll be spending $118 to fill up this tank. Not capless fueling by the way, but that is a pretty fancy fuel cap. And now that I have picked up my beautiful date, on our way to the restaurant, this here, would you like going on a date in this? Absolutely. I think, I mean, I don't know very many places where you could live with this year round. Yeah. Oh, and while you're answering this, let me just go ahead and turn oh. on your heated seats. Oh. And your heated neck scarf. What? Behind you, you what? got a vent that's gonna, just gonna blow hot air on your neck. Not like an old man oh. breathing on you, just like a little bit more force <laughs> Yeah, than that. that's true. It doesn't oh, feel like creepy. Massage. So oh. there's a button front, front of your seat, button. circular. Boom. There you go. Uh, might I recommend Wave? That's a good one. Um, okay. I'm also going to have a wave massage just as we kind of process this one. So what I'm thinking of is on our date, you want to be one, comfortable. Yes. Are the seats comfortable? 100%. I keep saying 100%. So it's a full 100%, <laughs> like not even it's a question. It's not just 99.5. <laughs> okay. And like they just sound like... Well, can you adjust the, the lumbar? I'm mm, sure. Yes, of course, okay. of course. They're like 80 way power yeah, adjusting. Course, yeah. yeah, so adjust right, the lumbar. So you're fine. Figure that out, yeah. okay? Uh, but the seat shape is nice. The padding is nice. Mm -hmm. Okay, what about like, do you feel warm enough in here? You didn't really dress for the weather, babe. It's like 50 degrees. Yeah, I'm With super wind cold. coming at you. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know. We knew we were going on a date in a convertible. Honestly, do we own that many like warm clothing items? No, we live okay, in SoCal. So All right, that's fair. There's okay, that. but like, okay, if I turn this up, are you going to get enough? I need more heat. More heat. Okay, let's get the more. fan going a little bit more. That's good. More heat? Yes, I'm good. That's, That's good perfect. With, okay, good with that. Yeah. All right, so we got enough heat on the hands and feet. Yeah, that's good. Um, do you feel like the moving air around, at least at these speeds, is too much? Or can we like no. kind of have a low-level conversation? Yeah, it's not, it's not too much at all. Yeah, it's still not too loud even with the top down? No. I get hot easily, so I don't mind. Yes the cold but i could see how some people would not want to have the top down but you would deal with it right i would deal with it like for i sure. mean i didn't just bundle up i didn't marry wear a, a coat before the highway i did forget to ask one important question what stylish is it stylish enough for you for a date night like is it impressing you yeah the physique not yes. my physique obviously but you know the car's physique <laughs> is that for now hey I do my best to play tennis. Okay, I play tennis to surf. I do things like that. But the look of the car, it's yes. like it's got that wow factor for you. It feels like a sense of occasion. Oh yeah, yeah? absolutely. Okay. I like the red too. You don't like it? Don't I like, like red. the. I like. This. I think it's a beautiful red. That sounds good too. You like the sound of the V8? I like the V8. You like the feel of the acceleration? Yes. That's pretty good. Okay, so at these speeds, yes, more wind, more moving air like that. If I move my seat forward, this is how you avoid the wind. That's good. That's See? game planning. Yeah. So that but works. then I'm real, real close to the front here. Like we don't have to shout at one another no. to have a conversation at highway speeds. That's positive. Because on a date in theory, you want to talk to one another. Eh. Hey, we've been married for five years. We <laughs> still have things to talk about outside of kids, but our kids are funny and we talk about them a lot. Of course. And how about that sunset, which is now set, but the colors, the cotton candy skies. It's beautiful. You can't beat winter sunsets in Southern California. And January. And a beautiful day. Oh, oh thank you. Oh. Mobile Mama, do you feel like you're falling in love all over again? With you? With me. Yes. I mean the car for the first time, but me, <laughs> like five years later. Wait, before you answer that. Currently? No. That's where we're going to dinner, babe. Oh, 
Big Jung. Yay! It's our favorite restaurant. Love Korean it. Korean barbecue. Delicious. So good. Delicious. Can't also, wait. check this out. Mm. Yeah? Mm, I like that. That's yeah. classy. That <laughs> is classy. Classy! <laughs> Date night success! Well, I mean, we haven't eaten yet, but we know what we're getting with that. Yes. And we're seeing Ferrari. Oh, <gasps> yes. Come on. The movie. Not the. We're driving the Bentley. We're seeing Ferrari. <laughs> Yes! All right, crew, dinner was fantastic. Ferrari was honestly pretty gruesome, but still an incredible story and had some great acting. And now I'm gonna finalize my thoughts on what it's like to live with the Bentley Continental GT convertible here at night. Can't miss those flying B puddle lamps and Bentley spelled out here on the side plate. And of course, we're finishing this one off with the top down. Quick aside, check this out. Night vision. Not all that practical here in suburbia, but still cool to have. Now out loud, at the beginning of this video, I asked the question of whether it was reasonable to live with a high-end luxury convertible here in a place like Southern California. And the answer is yes, but there's more to it than that. And I'll start with the things that are less than desirable about living with the Continental GTC. Starting with the way it looks, this is not the most aesthetically pleasing Grand Tour. And then there are those rear seats, which are really just decorative. If the top is up and you needed to use the sun visor to block the sun from your left side, then you'd be concerned with the fact that it does not slide at all. That just seems like a small oversight. And then the doors are pretty thick and long, so you need all this space next to you when parking, so you're not having this really tight entry and exit point. Everything else is more than just livable, it's downright enjoyable. The ride and seat comfort of this car are excellent and can actually fully enjoy these seats, which are well contoured, well padded. They've got the heating, they've got the ventilation, they've got the massage, and they've got this little wind scarf blowing warm air on your neck with the top down. And it can get even better because there's a removable piece that installs just behind the back seats for maybe longer journeys because it's not something you're gonna install and uninstall day in and day out, but that can even cut the wind noise further. And despite my complaints about rear passenger storage, the interior storage cubbies in this vehicle are not all that bad. At low speeds, you'll appreciate the maneuverability of the Continental GTC thanks to the rear wheel steering system. So working around a parking lot is very easy despite this vehicle's intense dimensions. And then at higher speeds, you'll really appreciate the passing power and yet smoothness of this twin turbocharged V8. And so while the Continental GTC isn't my first choice for high-end luxury convertibles, it is still a vehicle you could most certainly live with year-round, provided the right climate. I hope you guys have enjoyed this POV Day in the Life video, and I'll see you again next time.